go. Ah. <laughs> How far can we push the human body? That's a question I've tried to answer time and time again for Wired's video series, Almost Impossible. That's right at the threshold. <laughs> I've tried running as fast as an elite runner trying to break two hours in the marathon, and I've tried matching the power output of elite cyclists. And while those tests felt like they were taking forever at the time, for me anyway, they really represented these really short bursts of energy. When it comes to endurance events that last weeks or even months on end, scientists and athletes really aren't sure what the upper limits are on human performance. But a new study that looks at energy expenditure in everything from multi-day ultra marathons to pregnancy could shed light on just how far humans can push themselves for prolonged periods of time. To learn more about what that study found, we caught up with Dr. Herman Ponser. He's one of the lead authors on the study. I'm a professor of evolutionary anthropology at Duke University, and I study human evolution and metabolism. You, you were looking at a, at a pretty, pretty gobstopping endurance event, right? Yeah, this whole study got started when uh, Bryce Carlson, who is a co-author on the study, um, he was organizing the science team for this crazy event called the Race Across the USA. And uh, people ran from the Pacific Coast to Washington, D.C. They did a mar marathon a day, six days a week, for five months. It's, it's 3,000 plus miles, 140 days. My lab, we specialize in studying energy expenditure. He asked if we wanted to tag along and, and do the energetics of that, of that race. And of course, we said, absolutely. That sounds like, you know, you can't, can't miss it. So that was the impetus for this whole study. We, we measured energy expenditures at the beginning of the race and at the end. And as you can imagine, they're burning tons and tons of calories every day. You actually compared the race across the USA athletes to a bunch of other data that's been collected on athletes, on, on people who do manual labor, on people who are just undergoing normal biological processes, right? And, and what did that comparison show you? Right, so we took the data from the race across the USA athletes, and when you place it to, against triathletes, ultramarathon runners, Tour de France cyclists, Arctic trekkers, uh, mothers who are pregnant scoured literature to find all the longest lasting, highest intensity events we could find. And when you put it all together, you end up sort of mapping out this beautiful boundary of what the human body is capable of, the sort of limits of endurance. And as you might expect, you can burn a lot of calories for a short amount of time. You can burn, you can sustain fewer, you know, calories burned for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. And then the, the level at which you can maintain uh, your expenditure goes down, down, down as the duration goes longer and longer. It's not the same system, actually, but it's analogous to sprinting versus marathon running in track events where you can run super fast for 100 meters. Um, if you need to go a mile, then you have to pace yourself and go slower. That same kind of distance versus um, intensity relationship, only with us, we're seeing a time versus intensity relationship. And we're talking over much longer time periods than your standard, even, even your standard marathon. We're, we're looking at things that are days, weeks, yeah. months long. This is six marathons a week for multiple weeks on end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or in pregnancy, you know, nine months of uh, pretty intense ex uh, expenditure. What is the rate that you or I or an elite athlete or seemingly anyone, right, could sustain kind right. of indefinitely in, in an ultra, ultra, ultra endurance capacity, so to speak? It comes down to two and a half times your resting metabolic rate. What does that mean? So that means in, in real world terms, most people are burning around 1,600 to 2,000 calories a day just at rest, just at rest, at baseline. And so multiply that by two and a half and you get the level at which your body's able to put calories back. So somewhere between 4,000 to 5,000 calories a day would be the maximum sustainable amount of energy expenditure at which you're able to meet the, the you know, whatever you burn that day, you're able to put back at the end of the day. You did find that some people do exceed that two and a half multiplier in short bursts or for shorter sustained efforts, right? So right, so you can sustain, you can, you can go above that ceiling. You can go above that two and a half BMR ceiling for a while. We wouldn't consider that to be truly sustainable forever because um, if you're negative energy balance, as we say, if you're losing weight, then obviously there's a, you can't push yourself like that forever. You'll, bad, bad things happen. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a good way to put it. What do you think is keeping that limit at 2.5 times metabolic rate? What seems to be setting that two and a half times basal metabolic rate limit is how quickly your body can digest calories and get them into your, into your body in a useful way. Um, and we see that no matter what the activity is, if you're trekking, if you're in the Tour de France, if you're pregnant, if you're 
doing a triathlon or an ultramarathon, no matter what the activity is, when we calculate how many calories people are able to absorb into their bodies, it seems to be that two and a half basal metabolic rate limit. And that's probably telling us about uh, the limit at which, the rate at which you can digest calories from your food in through your intestine, intestines, through your liver, and get into your body in a useful way. So you mentioned that this is operating on a different system from what separates, say, a 100-meter sprinter from a marathon runner. And it sounds to me that the system actually has to do with your digestion. Is that right? If you look at, at shorter events like marathons, sprints, you know, miles, those seem to be based on, you know, the limits there seem to be based on, based on, your, on your muscles and, and muscle uh, ability and, and fatigue. Um, when we look at these really long events, it's, it's the limit, it's your guts, basically. You actually approached this problem from a couple different angles, and one of them yeah. was, I, I, was struck me as really creative, which was you actually also looked at overfeeding studies. Yeah. Can you talk to me about why you did that and what it showed you? In, in science, when you're kind of doing outside-of-the-box stuff, which I think this study is, you end up kind of following your nose and, and trying to figure out, you know, go where the evidence takes you. And so when we had this sense that... Um, from the weight loss in the endurance events that energy absorption was a big part of this, that had us wondering, well, where, how can we look at studies where people have maxed out their abilities to absorb calories? Well, the whole point of the study was to maximize and push your digestive system to the brink and absorb as many calories as you could and as fast as possible. That would be an overfeeding study. So there have been studies done uh, both in different cultural groups where they go on these sort of month and two long month long binges as part of their culture where it's, it's men will in their early 20s usually just try to pack on weight for a month or two as well as like laboratory studies where people are you know in a metabolic ward in a very much more sort of wet you know clinical laboratory setting and they're just plied with all the calories they can get the goal is to gain as much weight as possible it's like the biggest winner instead of the biggest loser no matter what you do with that uh no matter what how you test it we get the same answer which is Again, you're able to take in about two and a half times your basal metabolic rate of calories. Uh, again, that four to 5,000 calorie range for most people per day as, as the max, even when you're just jamming yourself full of calories. So given that you also looked at studies that looked at pregnant women, does this tell us anything new about pregnancy as a, as a biological process? It kind of puts a new light on it for sure. I don't think it's going to change you know, the way that mothers should be cared for or, or take care of their nutrition or anything like that. We're not doctors and we're not you know, proposing some new way of taking care of pregnant women. But what I think this does say is pregnancy takes mothers to the same brink, the same boundaries of, of human ability um, as a Tour de France race, as a triathlon, as an ultramarathon. And so, you know, mom's metabolic machinery is getting pushed to the limit. And it's just, I think, one more uh, reason that we have to be really sure that we get mothers all the nutritional help they need all the medical help they need uh, to keep them healthy because it isn't, it isn't easy. And I, I don't think that that's news to any woman who's gone through pregnancy. Uh, but, you know, just one more piece of evidence of just how, how tough it, it is on the body. Comparing it to a marathon, almost it, it really doesn't do it justice, right? It's like multiple marathons. Yeah, that's right. The, the people who ran across the USA um, for five months, a marathon a day, we're you know, not really pushing it any harder than, uh, than a pregnant mother does. That's amazing. Metabolically speaking, that's yeah. incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's conceivable that, that somebody could exceed this limit? Well, you know, um, since we published this study, uh, we've gotten, you know, Twitter is a wonderful thing because you just have to say, it's not possible to do X. And then you'll get a thousand people who want to tell you about how they did X or somebody that they know did X. It's great, actually. And it's gotten a lot of people excited and we're excited about it. Do I think it's possible? Of course. You know, and, and we, you know, the data kind of brought us here and the data will take us to someplace new if that's what, uh, what we can find. Um, all I can say is, you know, we looked as hard as we could to look at, find all the high intensity, long lasting endurance activities we could find that had any kind of, you know, credible measures of expenditure on them. So is it possible? Sure. Uh, and hopefully I'll get a chance to see it happen and, and, um, and then the science will go on from there. For those of us who aren't running six marathons a week for multiple weeks on end, what is the, what is the takeaway for this study? Well, the takeaway is this. One is that um, there are real limits to what you, your body can do, <laughs> and we can now map that out. You don't have to run the, you know, a, an ultra marathon or be in the Tour de France to potentially you know, be kind of coming up against these limits, right? So I think that um, for a lot of people out there who are recreational athletes, 
and love to push themselves, I think this tells you maybe some guidance about what you can expect your body to be able to handle over the long term. Thank you so much for talking with us. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was, it was a great conversation. Thanks.